Hi and welcome to the sew along for view C of the camisole pack. So this is what I call a traditional cami. It's a darted and shaped camisole. So just before we get started, this is a woven fabric and the seams are one centimetre, which is three eighths of an inch. And we're going to be using an overlocker on the raw edge to tidy up the seams. Just a little bit of a disclaimer before we start with this pattern. So this is semi-shaped and semi-fitted. It's got darts and it's got a centre back seam to allow for a little bit, bit of extra fitting within the body. Now, generally when we have a garment that's faced, the rule is you always fuse, which is fusible interfacing, you fuse the facings. So I've tried this pattern on a number of different lighter fabrics with a number of different fuses and the fuse just looks too heavy for the style of the camisole. So I'm going to make a judgment call. Once you know the rules, you can break them. Um, that's the theory anyway. So I'm going to say you can sew this camisole with no fuse on the facings. So what that means is you will get the facing to finish off the edge, which will give you a, a nice look but it will be a softer facing. It won't be a crisp look. It'll be just a very soft look to the edge. Now, if you are concerned, of course, you can just go and cut some fuse for those facings. So uh, before you start, that's what you need to know. So this is semi-fitted and semi-shaped. Um, it's just a nice, easy wearing camisole and the length of it is slightly longer than view A and B. So uh, let's get started and we'll start off by sewing the darts. Here is the front of my camisole. I've put a pin in where I've marked the drill holes and if you look towards the side seam you will see notches. There's a notch here and a notch here. So what this means is this shows us the position of the dart. Now this is right side inside, wrong side out. So to sew the dart, the first thing we do is come to the side seam and just match those two notches together. What I'll do is I'll just pop a pin in it so we know it's in position. And then we go to where the drill hole is marked which is here. So in the garment industry a drill hole is a physical hole in the fabric. Um, the pattern instructions tell us to sew one centimetre, three eighths of an inch, past the drill holes. That's so we can hide any physical holes in our fabric. So what this means is we arrange our fabric so that the notches are sitting on top of each other and that the point of the drill hole is directly on the fold line that we create like this. What we're going to do is imagine a point one centimetre, three eighths of an inch, past that hole and we're going to sew in a straight line from the side seam right up to that part we imagined and we're going to back tack off. We always sew from the side seam to the dart not the other way around. So what we're going to do and making sure that your stitch length is correct and you've made sure your ten tension is all balanced start at that notch position and what you do is you arrange your work so that there's a straight line from here to that mark point one centimeter past the drill hole so we don't do this, we want to make sure that that's straight and this is on an angle. And we want to sew in a straight line. Now I'm just going to take that pin out of there. So I'm aiming for that position there. Remember to back tack and then just sew a straight line. Whoops, hang on, I'll just get that as caught under. We don't want our thread caught under. That will just be annoying. There we go. Right. So we want to go in a straight line off the edge and then back onto back tack and off the edge again. So that's where that thread's got. And that's how we sew our dart and it's very straightforward 
and there's no puckers as you can see. So when we open this up and press this, the dart will press towards the hemline and that will just be in a nice gentle um, ending to the dart. There won't be any tucks or, um, or hard ends to it. So that's why we need to go right off the edge of the fabric but we don't stitch off the edge, we go right off the edge and then we back tack on. And now we'll just repeat that on the other side. Okay, now go to your iron and press those darts down. So let's work on the straps. You'll have two rectangles that are exactly the same. What we're going to do is fold them in half, right sides together, and we're going to sew a seam down the long edge. And the seam allowance is six mil, which is quarter of an inch. And it's six mils because this is what's called a bag out. All we're going to do is sew a six mil quarter of an inch seam down. Remember to back tack at the beginning and end. And when you've done one strap, go ahead and do the same thing on the other strap. Now take your loop turner and turn those straps so they are wrong sides together, which is right side out. And take those to the iron and give them a really good press. Now we're going to work on the back. And we're going to start off by sewing the centre back seam. So the centre back seam is the seam with two notches, a double notch in it. So place your fabric right sides together and match those double notches. Then we're going to sew a seam one centimetre width and you can either sew it from the bottom to the top or the top to the bottom. It's up to you depending on the way you like your seam run to be. Now just as a note, when you're sewing seams, it's a really good idea if you start sewing the garment from the bottom to the top, make sure every seam is sewn bottom to the top if you can. Or if you choose top to the bottom, same thing. Thank you. 
So now we need to overlock that seam to secure it, but we can do some more overlocking at the same time. So what we're going to do now is take the facing pieces and open them up and we're going to place the front facing to the back facing and sew them together at the sides so we can overlock that at the same time. Now the top of the facing has a notch in it so that's how you know the upper edge so that's our strap placement. So what we want to do is match the sides and we're going to sew a one centimeter seam at the sides. And do the same thing for the other side. So now let's move to our overlocker and overlock those three edges. Now because this is a woven fabric we only need three threads of overlocking to tidy the edge but I like the look of four so I'm going to use four. So all we're going to do is start off by overlock tidying the centre back and then the sides of the facings. The other thing we need to do while we are at the overlocker is to take the facing piece and we need to overlock the bottom edge. So the bottom edge is the edge with the point. So it's a good idea to overlock this from the right side and to start at a side seam making sure the side seams of the facing are facing towards the back and we're just going to overlock on the edge of that to secure it. So take your front and place it right side up and take your back and place it right side down. And when you place it right side down make sure you have the top at the top and you'll know the top because it will have small notches to show us the strap position. So what we're going to do is match and sew the side seam. So start off by matching the hem you might find it easier to pop a pin in it. As you come up the side seam you will see a notch and that notch matches to the dart we sewed before on the front. And when you have that in position sew that seam at one centimeter which is three eighths of an inch and then go ahead and overlock it and repeat on the other side. Remember to back tack the beginning and end.
And now because I'm here and it's easy, I'm going to overlock the hem. So the hem for this is a, um, there is a one centimeter seam allowance, the same as the other. And just as the same as the other, you could either um, overlock on the edge, turn up one centimeter, three eighths of an inch and uh, flat machine, or you could do a double fold finish. So here is my garment right side out with the front on at the top and the back at the back. So we're going to be sewing the facing and we're going to be sewing the straps in at the same time. So let's start by tack stitching the straps into position. Here at the top of um, the peaks, I suppose you'd call them, um, at the pointed part of the front is where our strap is going to sit. We're going to sew up here at 6mm across and then down at 6mm so that should fit in just perfectly. So to help you out it's a really good idea to tack stitch that into place. And just make sure you don't have any of that um, back layer. I'm just going to tack stitch the front strap here and now because I'm going to sew that as a 6mm seam allowance I'm just going to make sure I tack stitch that within the 6mm seam allowance just so we don't have to remove any stitching later on. So you've done one strap like that. Now because my seam for the strap was facing the inside I'm just going to make sure I do the same thing on the other side have that facing the inside like that and stitch that one down as well making sure we only have the one layer Now the other thing we have to make sure we sew it in is that it is directly up and down, so perpendicular or at right angles, so it would be going straight down. You don't want the strap to sit funny. Okay. So now we've got the front strap in the correct position, we can tack stitch the back into position as well. Um, what can happen is you can get yourself a little bit confused, so I tend to like to do it when we go around the back. Um, if you just leave the straps there like that, so what we've got is the garment right side out with the front straps tacked into position. Take your facing and we want the facing wrong side out. What we want to do is match the facing to the front so that it is right sides together. So what I'll do to help myself out is I will pin at one of the strap positions and then the other strap position I'm going to pin at the center front Turn this towards the back and I'll pin at the side seams and I want to make sure that the side seams sit directly on top of each other. And the notch here is for the strap position which I'm just going to ignore for now. I'll make sure the centre notch matches the centre back seam. the side seam sits directly on top of each other. So um, there's a couple of ways you can attack this. Now there should be no need to adjust the strap length but if you do what you could do now is sew from one side of the um, strap notch through to 
that side of the strap notch on the other side. Then you could try this on and pin those straps into position before you complete that seam off. Um, and that's a really good idea just to try it on and make sure that strap length is appropriate for you. Um, I'll assume that the strap length is the correct size. So what we need to do now is just we've got to make sure when that strap gets sewn into position that it's not going to be twisted. And all you'll be doing is making sure it's not twisted, tuck it in between the two layers and match it to the notch position. If you wanted to, you could tack that into place too. Um, all I suggest you do is just pin it into place and then just double check that when that's being worn, it won't um, be twisted. So come to the front, make sure it's not twisted, and tuck it into the back and match it to the notch position. Like so. Now we're going to sew around the top of that seam to secure it. The seam allowance is 6mm which is quarter of an inch because we allow 6mm or quarter of an inch for bag outs and facings. And this is a facing. So if you were using fuse for this facing, um, there's absolutely no different to the construction. You might just find it's a little bit firmer. So I'm going to stop here, lift, turn and pivot to sew directly across the top of the strap, just the width of the strap, then lift, turn and pivot and readjust my work to sew towards the centre front. Now the fabric I'm sewing with today is a um, linen look textured polyester chiffon. going to sew down to the point of the front. I'm going to stop with a needle in my work, lift turn and just a gentle pivot to come up the other side. coming up on the back strap position. Now if you haven't done it already, now's the chance to go and try this on and just double check those straps are the right length and then they're in the, and that they're in the correct position for you. And by that I mean they hide your bra strap or at least they're pretty close to where your bra strap is at the back and at the front. Alright, so once you've done that, come back to the plain machine. Right, so now we have to pin stitch, and some people call that under stitching. We're going to pin stitch the facing just to help the facing roll to the center. So the position we're going to start from is the center front. So find that center front position, and we want to start and finish either side of that center front, leaving around about a centimeter, three eighths of an inch in the middle. So find that center front position. And the exact amount doesn't matter as long as you start and finish the same distance away from the front. So what a pin stitch is, or people call that an understitch, is it's an, a stitch that's the width of a pin from the seam line and we're going to sew it on the facing side through all of those layers and it just helps push the seam and make the garment sit nicely. So make sure you back tack 
and remembering we're starting at the centre front and you just really follow that around nice and gently. Now some people think it's best to press this before you edge stitch it. I personally don't but that's up to you. So we're coming up on the strap and I'm going to stop just short of the strap and back tack to finish. Now the distance I stopped short of the strap, I'm going to start the same distance on the other side. So it's around about a centimetre, three eighths of an inch as a rule of thumb. So when we do this, we just want to make sure we don't catch any of the other um, part of the garment as we're doing it. Some people find it easier to um, turn this inside out like this and that just keeps the bulk of the fabric away from your work. So as you go you can do some quality control work and trim off some of those extra overlocking threads or any extra threads you have. And because we're not using fuse, fusible interfacing, try not to stretch this too much or you will stretch it out of place depending on how fine your fabric is, I mean how soft. So we're coming up on the other strap, same thing, stop, 3 eighths of an inch, 1 centimetre away from one side and then just start again the same distance on the other side. And now we're approaching that centre front location. So just double check where the centre front is, which for me is here. And I want to stop around about there. If you go all the way into the centre, the garment won't sit properly. All right, so that's our facing complete. It's a good idea to now go to your iron and press that towards the inside. And while you're on the job, go and press up the hem into position. So the hem allowance is one centimetre, three eighths of an inch as well. And um, then we can come and top stitch it, I mean stitch it into place. So let's sew the hem that you previously overlocked. Um, you may have of pressed a hem allowance here at one centimetre. So all we're doing is going to turn the hem up to the wrong side and we're going to stitch through the overlocking line at one centimetre, three eighths of an inch, making sure our hem is nice and even all the way around. I'm just going to tuck my overlocking to the inside. Some people like to use fray stop, other people um, like to thread it through. I just tuck mine to the inside. And remember to back tack when you get back to the beginning of your work and do some quality control work. Now just to make sure that the facing stays into place, come to the side seam and make sure that the um, side seam facing and the side seam of the garment are sitting directly on top of each other. And what we're going to do is stitch in the ditch or 
tack stitch through all those layers. So what we want to do is tack stitch pretty much at the where the edge of the facing would be and we want to just do forwards a couple of stitches and back a couple of stitches and you want to sew them directly in the seam ditch that's why it's called stitch in the ditch because when the garment's being worn those stitches just disappear but that will help hold the facing down so make sure you do that on both sides so all we do is we make sure that it's sitting like this the seams are on top of each other and come to approximately where the lower edge is and then stitch two or three stitches forwards and back and forwards again and it's essentially just a tack stitch to hold that in place and then do some quality control work and trim the threads off. So thanks for joining me with these sew alongs I hope you get a lot of use out of this camisole pack they're certainly a very versatile three pack um, as part of your summer wardrobe. Um, thanks for joining me I hope to see you again for my next sew along video soon and don't forget to join my Facebook Pattern Discussion Group, which is Trish Newbury Design Pattern Discussion Group.